everybody. Welcome back to my Foster channel. My name is Amy of Amy Jane's Creations and this is Lost Tube episode 15. It is October 22nd and uh, I decided I needed to stop cross-stitching and get this filmed before it got even darker and later. Uh, darker and later. So here I go. Uh, I want to say, first of all, welcome. I have had several new subscribers since the last um, episode, my last video, and I don't know how you guys found me. I don't know what made you subscribe, but I'm super happy you're here, and welcome. Thank you. Um, and I've even talked with a few, so that was really, really fun as well. Okay, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think I'm going to jump right in with more of my previous finishes that I have sewed in years past and never showed because I've never had a floss tube at Halloween. So the first one is the Lizzie Kate Spooky String. Uh, there's, let's see here. I'm going to try to move the, oh, there we go. You can kind of see it slightly better. Um, it's a spooky string. I stitched all of the strings on the same uh, 14 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed myself. Um, I finished them all pretty much the same. They go on these little boards and um, then with, I have washers on the back that I just changed them out of the board that hangs permanently on the wall. Uh, I just kept it su super simple. That's kind of my style as you're learning black big jumbo rickrack and some orange fabric to accent the Halloween colors. I did change colors. They seemed, if I remember right, there was a lot more brown on this, I think, and I added more greens and more purples to make it more Halloween-y. So there's that. The other one, this glass is pretty dusty. I should probably reframe this, but uh, let's see if I can, there we go, that's okay with no, uh, there's, <laughs> you can see my bed, <laughs> there's a reflection, but it's not horrible, horrible. This is out of a magazine, I'm pretty sure it was a Just Cross Stitch magazine, an October or September issue, but what year, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't. I think I have part of this um, pattern left, like on a, of a, you know, like back, cause they're magazine pages that I ripped out of another um, finish somewhere, but, or not another finish, another pattern, but I didn't go through it. If anybody's really, really interested, cause it is super cute, I can dig through all my stuff and try to find out more information for you. Um, uh, yeah, I just did this in a simple frame from metal black frame from Ikea. Uh, and I remember I did mess up a few times on the border and I just fudged it and made it work. I stitched this mostly while my, um, was it my two daughters or was it Noah? I think it was my son Noah was in swim class. Yeah. I would sit there in the in the indoor swimming and, and stitch on this. Uh, back in the days when I didn't need uh, readers or even that bright of light to stitch on black. <sighs> what a joyous time that was. So there's that. And then this next previous finish does have some stitching on it, although it's embroidery, not uh, cross stitch. <clears throat> And I made, at the time I did this, I made two of these, and I'm gonna need to scoot back. One for me and one for my brother and sister-in-law because they love Halloween. And I figured I was doing it already. I had it, you know, out. This was a block of the month. It was offered, but this was like the only month they ever did, uh, by Missouri Star Quilt Company. It's a pattern by somebody else, but they highlighted it. There's a video. If you, you know, Google search Halloween block of the month, Missouri Star Quilt Company, I'm sure this will come up. It was, do I have this the right direction? I do. Look at this thing. I'm going to try and sit way back. 
Uh, okay, so some of it is just patchwork, as you see here, right here. But then like hanging, so <clears throat> here you go. There's some embroidery. I think it was originally supposed to be in like a dark gray, but I didn't have any, so I used that purple. Mm -hmm. On this sign here hanging, there's a little bit of embroidery. I did all the free motion quilting myself. So I did the little pumpkins on the square. I did um, on the house. Whoops, I just dropped this. On the house, I don't know if you can tell. Let's see if I can try to hold it. There you go. I sort of made it look like, um, like there were tiles on the roof. And made the cute, so there's like a little witch hat. And then way down here below, there's some more embroidery and applique, bugs and hisses. Uh, yeah, it was super fun to make. Uh, I was glad that I, and I just kind of used, obviously I didn't use any of the called for fabrics. I just dug through my fabrics. I saved and bought little bits of Halloween fabric for several years, for like three or four years, knowing that I wanted to make this quilt. I had seen the pattern and then um, started, started collecting fabrics to make it. And I'm glad that I did two at once because that I needed a break, you know, from, from making the quilt. Um, but if my quit kids get uh, married and want a quilt of their own, I, I will happily make one. I, I did keep the pattern for that because I could see that it had the potential for wanting to be used um, in future patterns. So those are my Halloween finishes. I am going to try and take some photos of where I have things set up, but I'm not sure if I my editing skills are up to adding them onto this video. I may just post them to Instagram. Oh, and that's, yes, in fact, I'm just gonna do that because it's easier. I'll just post them on Instagram, Amy Jace Creation, same name. Um, please go ahead and follow me. Okay, so now for my whips, of course, and I keep forgetting to bring something to hold this up, but you know what, the light's not that great. I think it's fine, I'll just hold it up. Here is my Christmas tree. It is coming along, as you can see, there's just a few spots there where I still need to fill in that last green. I've got all the candles and all the Christmas baubles done. And then after that, there's beading. And with a bit of gold, I need to go, you'll see it right there. See around that, let's see, well, it's not gonna, yeah, right there. Around that candle, you use some gold to make it look like the rays of light. So I'll need to do that on add the beading and all those rays of light, but I'll do that at the very, very end. But I'm getting there, people. I'm getting and I'm already planning how I will do this again on a slightly darker piece of fabric, smaller count, and using some overdyed flosses and some um, metallics, I think, some metallics for these. So that'll be fun. I'm really happy with that progress. And like I said, I have a friend who's willing to take it for me in uh, November. She's leaving November, mid-November to go over to the States for Thanksgiving. So she will take that and mail it to my parents. All right, the other main big project that I'm working on pretty much daily is the Pine Needles uh, Halloween Stitch Along. Every day they release a new pattern. I did get a bit behind, which I will talk about in um, when I do life updates, but there, there was a lot going on this week. So just today I sat down and was able to work on these four um, blocks. They're not completely done, but I got some good progress. And like I said, decided I needed to stop stitching so that I could make this video. But I love this, love this stitch along. And the best 
funnest thing ever. So I have a new subscriber who reached out to me and um, she, okay, and now I'm an old lady and my brain just kind of, I think it's Rebecca or Becca. Sorry. Um, we are going to do, she also has the pattern for the Christmas one that, from, that came out last year and she never did it. And I have all the patterns, but I never did it. So we're going to start a little stitch along, just us two, and anybody else who wants to join in who's a year late to do the Christmas one. So we're going to start that on December 1st. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be really fun. And then we'll post each other's, um, we'll post the progress on Instagram to kind of keep each other, um, oh, what's that fancy word? I don't know. Responsible? Um... I, no, that's not the word. Sometimes in my brain, I, I because the German and the English are both in there, neither one of which are really good, I can't, I can't remember. All right, <clears throat> so those are the main things I was working on, and I was happy with that. And then I was watching the Virginia Stitcher, and she showed some of her previous finishes. Now this wasn't fully finished when she show it, showed it, but it was this little witch pattern sitting on a pumpkin. And I went, oh, I have that pattern. And almost every year I look at that pattern and I think, mm, should I start it? Mm, maybe I won't. I don't know. Mm. And um, after my bout of fabric dyeing, which I will also show you, I decided I had dyed the perfect color and I was going to finally start this little witch. So here's what she's going to look like finished completely. Although I am not going to be doing this outer border because I don't have the buttons. So I'm not going to bother with it. And here is my start. Now I would have had a whole bunch more done. Except all around here and all here and all over here, I had stitched what I thought was black, but it's supposed to be a dark, dark gray. <clears throat> but on the pattern, whoops, whoops, sorry, but just for a flash, it uses the symbol for this dark gray that on every other pattern almost universally is the symbol for black. And so in my brain, I was like, oh yeah, black, which is hat. Nope, it's just a really dark gray that just gives the illusion of black with all these dark grays. So I had stitched that all in, discovered my error, and ripped it all out again. A couple people, like my sister-in-law, were like, oh, just leave it. Just live with it. The contrast was too stark, and I hated it. So I ripped it out. The second thing that I had to do is in this band here on her hat, if you look at the original, it's kind of hard to see in this side. It's a blue and then around here, there's blue. And then her socks are like a pink. I decided that my witch was going to have purple and purple and purple. So everywhere there's blue, I substituted, per, uh, everywhere there's blue and pink, I'm going to be substituting purple. So I had gotten half of this done and decided, nope, I wanted the purple, ripped it all out and started over. And then I've moved on down to her hair. But I think she's absolutely adorable. Clearly, she's not going to get done for this Halloween, but that's not the point. I just like to stitch Halloween-y stuff during the Halloween season, so I'm fine with that. Um, I will get her finished next year, and she'll be all ready. But yes, so this is on a piece of 32 count. Ooh, I know, because I counted. 32 count gray, and I'm trying to see here if I... What can I hold this up against? Mm, pretty much nothing. Sorry. Um, I dyed this myself. I It's a super, super watered down black dye. It has just slight modeling. And I, I really, really, really like how it turned out. You can kind of see it a little bit there. So there's, so that's that. Then the last thing I, w I just, I had another new start. <clears throat> my second new start, was I realized that I had not finished a prayer school or Santa in a while. And my idea was that I'm going to have all, I'm making seven, no, the, yeah, seven prairie schoolers. Um, 
was the coordinate the the years that I'm doing are the years that matter. So like the year my husband and I were born, the uh, not born because Prairie School of Santa's didn't exist back then. We're so old. But the years that my kids were born, the year we got married, those types. So that's why there's, so I have five kids plus us. Oh, and then I was doing, um, I think I'm going to maybe, I don't have the pattern for it yet, but if I can find it, maybe for next year, I want to do the pattern for the year we moved to Switzerland, which is 2000. So I hadn't finished one in a while. And if I wanted at least the ones for all my kids done for this Christmas, I need to be going. So here's, here's, this is the 2001 Santa. Sorry, I don't know where the pattern is right now. I just grabbed this real quick. 2001 Santa for one of my daughters. Um, let's see if I can pull this up here. There you go. Uh, these are such quick, fin quick stitches. I am doing them on a 40 count darker beige. I don't know what the exact color is. It's the uh, linen that I bought direct from the Spygart factory in Stuttgart. Um, and I'm doing all my Santas on it, and I really like it. And with this one, I don't know why, but I got this crazy harebrained scheme that I was going to start the border first, and that's why there's like these little... And then I realized, oh, it stops where there are certain elements, and I um, was having trouble counting them, so I just left these huge long strings of green to finish the border while I went ahead and did some more of the design. So that will probably get finished up this week. Very, uh, yeah, in the next couple of days, and then I can start another one. Uh, because it is mid-October, and so I need to get going. All right, so I'm going to, I just realized that I left the fabric that I dyed in a not easy to reach spot, so hold on just a second. All right, I'm back while I was, getting the material, I decided to stop and get a board so I could hold up the fabric to give you a better uh, representation of the color. So going along with that gray fabric that I just showed you, the lightest, the first time I dyed in the black dye, I had one of my um, subscribers had made a comment that I needed to be careful with that black dye because it is really strong so just lose a little bit so I did use just a tiny bit watered it down what I thought was quite a bit and I still came out with this pretty pretty dark gray even though I was going for a light gray at first and it's got like a couple splotches but I'm I'm going with it so that's there's that so then I dumped out some of the water and added you know, dumped out some yeah and then added more water to try to water it down and I got this which is slightly lighter you can see but it was this tiny little scrap and I was like that's not going to be big enough and but I used this to kind of see to gauge is that is that light enough no it was not so that's when then I went ahead and I uh, let out even more water added more again so dilute it even more and got this. And I'm super happy with that. But it's good to know that you can get a pretty dark gray if I want. If I And I left these in like I took the fabrics and dunked them in and then pulled them back out again. That's how long they were in the water. If I had left it in, you know, for even a whole minute, it would have been even darker. Um, so I was but I was just playing around. I'd never done it before. And it was really, really, really fun. So then I didn't use all the colors either. I just got a few random, well, I cut some fabric from all the different yards that I had bought at the factory and um, played around with it. So then I did the green and I used, it's a Kelly green. And this is a shimmer fabric. It's a shimmer Ada. I think it's a 16 count. And I did this. This was, of course, I didn't use full strength. I just put in some. And uh, I got this really pretty green that I think could be really cute for some Halloween. Or not Halloween. Wrong holiday. For some Christmas stuff. Um, but I wanted a, I was going for sort of a pale olivey green because I wanted to stitch, let's see, is it here on the cover? 
No, but in, oh, here it is. I wanted to stitch this pattern from Lindy Stitches on that kind of a lighter green, kind of a yellowy, yellowy light green. So I played around and I should have added some yellow dye, but I didn't, but I'm still happy with it. So then I did, oh, wait, no, that's not it. So then I diluted it some and got this green. And I'm gonna so hold it up to show. These are both Adas, although one is the opalescent and one is not, but it's quite a bit different. Um, also a very pretty green, but not, and it's see, it's kind of blowing out. Let's see, um, my light is horrible. I, it's more like the color in the magazine in real life, actually. Um, so I was pretty pleased with that. And then I decided to goof around. Actually, I did, this is an even paler, paler version. I watered it down some more. I'm going to put this on here so you can kind of see the contrast. See, there's a difference. So I did that one. And, um, and actually, hold on a second. This might be, I had so much fun and I didn't keep very good track record. Here's that other green. Here's another green on it. Um, and then I had a blue. And I did I did a straight blue, and that's what this is. That's what this is. This was the aqua aquamarine, I think. And then I mixed the green. So I dyed a piece in the blue, like I barely dunked it in. And then I kind of dribbled some of the green over it, all watered up and to get this effect. And uh, really like that. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on these. I just had bought a whole bunch of white. This is, I think it's 18 count Ada to dye for fun. Um, actually, this is an even weave. This is a 16 count even weave that I bought <clears throat> at the factory. And then for some more fun, I did a green piece and then dropped some of the watered down black onto it to get these splotches. And so then that gave me an idea. And I ran and got the leftover piece. So I had coffee tea dyed oh, a big, huge piece of this material. That I got, by the way, at um, the Goodwill, the Swiss version of Goodwill here. And I had keep seeing everybody's murky pieces of fabric and like, I don't want to, I don't want to pay the prices. I don't want to have to pay the import fees to get murky. And I didn't see it when I, and I didn't get to an LNS while I was in the States. So I decided that I am a creative girl and I can make my own murky. And yep, I did. Mm -hmm. I used that leftover coffee tea dyed piece, dunked it in the black for a little bit to get this kind of gray green overlay. The, 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 my light is really bad. I'll try to take some better pictures for Instagram. I did post a picture of it drying out on my balcony, but I am so thrilled with this. I really like it. Um, I even almost want to put a few more, like a little bit more black in some splotches on here, like for even more intense color, just in a few places. But overall, I'm very happy. It was super fun. I think my first foray into dyeing my own fabric was a success. I still have like purples and some pinks and a yellow that I've never used that I'm going to try, try playing around with. Um, but for my first, my first go around, that was pretty good. I have no fully finished objects, and the reason for that is going to be explained now in life update. Um, so <clears throat> I usually, how I usually work is I make a video, and then for the next week and a half, I just cross stitch all the time. And then two days before I'm going to film again, and I usually try to film on a Thursday, for that Tuesday and Wednesday, I, I fully finish some of my projects to show to you guys. Well, Tuesday, uh, 
was a bit busy. And then I had to run around and do a whole bunch of errands because we were having um, an activity with the ladies at my church on Thursday evening. And I was supposed to be in charge. So I had to, I'm not normally, but the lady who was supposed to wasn't going to be able to do it. So she asked me to go pick up 15 pumpkins for the ladies to paint. And I had to drive out to the middle of nowhere into this farm and get the pumpkins and run several other errands. So I left the house at two o'clock and barely made it back by 6 p.m. And then I still had to cook dinner. So Tuesday was shot as far as doing any finishing. And then Wednesday, I spent most of the day in the in doctor's offices, which was great for my stitching Well, in the morning. In the afternoon, I was there for an hour and a half and my daughter is mortified if she has to sit next to me while I cross stitch because that is what embarrassing old ladies do and she doesn't like to think of her mother as an embarrassing old lady. So I could just sit there and play games on my phone for an hour and a half. That was very frustrating. But in the morning I was at the dentist for an hour because my son was getting his wisdom teeth pulled out. Two of them. He'll do the other side in two weeks. Um, <clears throat> And then, of course, I got came home and had to take care of him. And then the afternoon, I was gone at that other appointment. And then all evening, he had a few complications. The bleeding wouldn't stop. The pain pills. He has such a high metabolism. He was burning through the pain pills. He was only supposed to take them every four hours. And I was trying to have him take the pills. And then after a couple hours, when it started to wear off, giving him ibuprofen. But that wasn't strong enough. So in a panic, I called the dentist and... Um, their office was closed and his wife gave me his cell phone number and if in case I couldn't reach him but promised to have him call me back. She gave me a few things I could try and then he called me right when she said he would and let me know that it was okay for me to give him those pain pills every two hours, that that was perfectly safe if that's what he needed and um, to call him in the morning if the bleeding hadn't stopped. Well, Thursday morning, the bleeding had stopped, but the pain pills, he was still burning through pretty fast, although the pain was starting to slow down. He was able to lick yogurt off a spoon, which was good. Um, but then I hadn't had any time to finish objects because Thursday, most of Thursday, he was in his room sleeping because he'd been up all Wednesday night in pain. I saw him at like 6.30 a.m. eating some yogurt and then he went to bed. So I didn't want to wake him because he's, I had turned his bedroom into my um, craft room when I, he was in the States, but now he's home, which I prefer to have him home than have a craft room. But, and normally he's upstairs doing online school, but of course he's not when he's addled from pain pills. Um, <clears throat> so I couldn't get in there to do any finishes. And then at three, my daughters had a couple friends come over for a movie night. And that evening I had that activity. So anyway, the day was shot for finishing or doing anything. And so today I decided I had gotten really behind on that Halloween cell. I did go in and say to him, how do you feel about me being in here doing some finishing? And he said, uh, which I took to mean he did not want me to. So I didn't, and I just crossed it. So no finishes. But that means next time I will have a whole bunch of finishes to show you. So uh, once again, thank you so much to all my new subscribers. Thank you for commenting. Please comment. I, I, I tried to leave an answer to every single comment or for the minimum, a heart, but most of them I try to uh, comment on. So yes, please continue. Give me any advice or tips or comments you want. Um, and if you're new and you just happen to randomly find it, if you think I'm not too weird or boring, please like and subscribe my video and, and join in. Um, and I will see you again in another couple of weeks, which means after Halloween. <gasps> Oh, I forgot to tell you guys the very best news. I met up with Ina. 
So uh, through Stitch Harmony and um, Just Keep Stitching, we she reached out and I answered her and we ended up getting together. We met in Constance, a city in Germany that's right over the border from Switzerland. Spent the whole morning together, had breakfast, went a little shopping. Oh my gosh, it was like, she said to me, it's so, it's like we're instant friends. She is super awesome, super nice. We already have an appointment to meet again in December when her her youngest baby gets a little bit older. We've making plans to go up to Stuttgart to the Zweigart factory again. I said, that's fantastic. I need to use up all this, <laughs> some more of this fabric that I bought when I was there last time. I went a little crazy. Um, we were hoping to take Dawn Frosty X Stitch with us when we go and any other uh, Swiss stitchers I can find between now and then, it'll probably most likely be like spring of next year that we go, but super, super fun. Looking forward to that. And then she wants to have a dying for it. Anyway, we have all these kind of plans to meet up. Super fun. It was awesome. I loved it. And we barely even talked any stitching at all. We just, we just connected and talked about all kinds of stuff. That was completely, completely awesome. So, sorry, I f forgot, I saved the best for last. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so, happy Halloween. I will see you in two weeks. Bye, cheese.